Today we're talking about lasting love and intimacy plays a big role in that. Here to talk about the surprising health benefits of sex at any age is physician, internal medicine and geriatrics, Dr. David Bernstein, who is a speaker and an award-winning author of The Power of Five, The Ultimate Formula of Longevity and Remaining Youthful. Dr. Bernstein, welcome to Bloom. It's such a pleasure. Thank you, Gail. It's a pleasure to be here today. So you wrote this book and out of the five vital components, sex is one of them. Well, I wrapped in five things because there are five fingers on my hand and people can remember five things. So avoiding and managing sweets, managing stress, getting more sleep, sweat, and sex. Okay, sleep, sweat, and sex are the last three. Yeah. Okay. And, and sex is important because that's all about socialization and relationships and connections. And that's what rounds out the whole power of five because we want to love somebody. We want to care for someone and interact with them so that that makes us live longer and healthier and happier. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, you say sex and everybody gets all nervous, but sex is directly linked to our overall health. I mean, it's not its not just a thought, it's medically proven. Correct, and, and that's why I couldn't help but include it in my formula. And, and it's about that connection between people, that share or release of hormones, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, that give us pleasure and connections that make us and help us live longer. And you're right, it's proven fact that people who have connections and relationships that are married live longer than those who aren't. Without a doubt. So now let's talk about sex at any age, because a lot of people are in the belief system that, oh, when I was young and we were this and we were that, but really there's, there's no expiration date when you're in a relationship. Absolutely right. There, there is no expiration date. We're connected for life, and, and that is a thing that makes us healthy. And there's no age limit. So I would ask my patients in my practice of 40 years, and I start with their first visit and do it every year, and ask them about their sexual activity, are they functioning, how is it working, and I've learned a lot from those people that would tell me those things. So it may start out as, as aggressive sexual activity and gradually gets more sedate and calm, but people can have their sex, their intimacy in terms of holding hands and cuddling in bed and touching and, and doing some of the other sex type things during the day that uh, talking about how's your day and how's your life going and, and sharing your intimate thoughts. That's all about that same thing. So it doesn't mean you always have to consummate. It means these just different things to show love and express love in that arena. Yes, and, and surely and consummate. consummate and <laughs> having sexual relations is really important and people love that. Men maybe more than women, but they do find that that is extremely rewarding in their lives. And when I've discounted someone accidentally that they're not being sexually active, they would be quick to correct me and say, oh no, doctor, we are active and we are in our mid eighties and we still enjoy what we do. That's, that's really incredible. So I think it's also um, very forward thinking of you as a doctor to bring this up because there might be medical reasons why people are no longer having sex that could easily be addressed. For women, it could be a hormone issue or a lack of testosterone or different things that could bring couples back together again because the whole theme of our show today is lasting love and that plays into it. And asking the questions, both from the doctor's standpoint and from the patient's standpoint, asking a physician, do you have something that can help rekindle this relationship or help me um, be more active sexually? What are your expectations? Because I have no expectation that there's an expiration date on that kind of activity because I've heard about it from many of my patients. And, and I thought about it this morning that there was one particular woman um, who I knew well enough to joke with her and I said to her during a visit, well, you're not active anymore. And she said, oh no, doctor, <laughs> I certainly am. And don't make that mistake again with anybody else. <laughs> I love that. And you did say in, 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 uh, in the beginning of this interview, you said, I've learned a lot. It, it, now we have just about just a few minutes, I mean, a few seconds left. You said you learned a lot. What is your biggest takeaway communicating with your patients and learning from them? Well, I think it's saying you love each other, 
showing that you love each other, listening to one another, and, and doing the little things. One of the expressions I have with my wife of showing my affection for her is I make coffee for her every morning. It's something that she could do, but I do it for her. And, and there was a couple that I took care of who were very late in life. They were in their late 80s and 90s, and both were having memory problems. But when I talked to their daughter, uh, she said, you know, they still hold hands when they go to bed and kiss each other every night. Oh, that's beautiful, Doctor. Thank you. These are great stories. It's a, it's a great, healthy conversation. And I appreciate you coming in today to share it on Bloom. Oh, it's been a pleasure to share this stuff. Absolutely. We're going to post the story on our website, bloomtampabay.com. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this.